All right, I'd like to finish off by doing some calculations with the ideal gas law and the Vandal's equation and to compare and see how they do relative to one another. So in this first example, we want to use the ideal gas law and the Vandal's equation to calculate the pressure of one mole of chlorine in a volume of five liters, a temperature of 200 Kelvin. So first, let's use the ideal gas law, right? So we have PV is NRT. I want the pressure. So to isolate that, I need to move the volume to the other side. And look like everything is in the right units. So And we'll work the units off to the side. So moles, R is liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin, temperature in Kelvin, volume in liters. And so using the ideal gas law, I get a pressure of Three point two eight atmospheres, and so let's see how the Van der Waals equation compares to the ideal gas law. We'll do that on the next slide. All right, so here's our result from the previous slide. What we got with the ideal gas law, um, I would certainly give you these coefficients. You don't have to have these memorized, um, and I would also give you the Van der Waals equation. So the Van der Waals equation. I think this is an instance where it's definitely easier to go ahead and plug in our numerical values um, and not worry about trying to carry the units with us uh, doing the dimensional analysis as we go. We just know that if we put everything in with the right units, um, the pressure is going to come out to be atmospheres if we use our regular R. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. Pressure is what we're looking for. A is 6.49. N is 1, so 1 squared is just 1. Volume is five. And is again one. Again, N is one. I probably should have written this as ah. put on the right sig figs here. Five point zero zero squared. All right, so this then simplifies to 6.49 divided by 25. Then we get 4.94. The right-hand side, that multiplies out to be 16.4. All right, so now I want to divide both sides by... 4.94, and then we'll subtract. And so with the Van der Waals equation, the pressure we get is 3.06 atmospheres, right? So this we would expect to be the more accurate result. And that compares not terribly unfavorably with the ideal gas law, right? If we wanted to, we could calculate the percent error. So 3.28 minus 3.06. We assume that the Van der Waals equation is giving us the more accurate result. So that's what we'll use is our denominator and so i get a percent error of 7.2 percent right so uh that's reasonable right 
It depends on what we're doing. If 7% error is acceptable, then maybe we would want to use the ideal gas law in this case. Um, but if we needed a more accurate result, then uh, we would want to go to the van der Waals equation. So I want to finish it off by doing a similar problem. Uh, I've still got chlorine. I've still got one mole of it. Uh, but now we've increased the temperature and we've increased the volume by quite a bit. Right? And so now I want to see how do the ideal gas on the van der Waals equation compare under these conditions. Now let's think about it and, and make a prediction on, on what we're going to expect. So the, uh, we tend to see non-ideal behavior at low temperatures. So the fact that we're increasing the temperature should uh, improve the uh, ability of the ideal gas law to describe this gas. And then the fact that I've increased the volume Right now, the actual volume of the molecules is going to be less significant compared to the total volume that is available. And so I think we would expect that the ideal gas law in the Reynolds equation should show better agreement in this case than in the previous one. And so let's see if that's true. So for the ideal gas law, right, P is again going to be NRT over V. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to skip uh, working out the units. Uh, we, we did that in the first one, uh, just in the interest of time. And so I get a pressure with the ideal gas law of 1.64 atmospheres. All right. Um, now, if we do the same thing with the van der Waals equation, So we're again solving for the pressure. And is again one. All right, and just uh, to save us some time, I'm, I'm not gonna work through the algebra here. Uh, you're welcome to do that if you want some practice, but uh, when I solve for P, I get 1.64 atmospheres. And so to the three significant figures that we have, uh, under these uh, somewhat different conditions, we can see that the ideal gas law and the van der Waals equation is giving us exactly the same answer. So under these conditions, uh, there'd be no reason to use the van der Waals equation. Uh, the ideal gas law is doing a great job of describing this particular gas sample.